Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy. Now, not long ago, one of my subscribers by the name of Judy asked me to explain the concept of shell theorem in conjunction with my video on the tunnel through the earth and dropping a ball through the tunnel to see how long it would take to hit the other side. You may recall that the way we approached that was that we calculated gravity going all the way down from the surface to the center by peeling away layers of the Earth and just treating the ball as if it's on a sphere of a smaller radius as it went all the way down. And I said that you could just disregard the peeled off shell and just consider the ball as being on the surface of a smaller sphere. That has to do with something called shell theorem. Now on the conspiracy theory aspect, uh, there is something out there called the hollow Earth theory. And according to that, the Earth itself is hollow and we live on the inside of it. And I'm going to go ahead and address that in this video as well. So let's look at what I'm talking about. If the Earth was hollow and we were on the inside of the Earth, why are we weightless? So let's go ahead and look at it real quick. So here we have a hollow Earth, okay? So this is the center of the Earth and this is the shell of the Earth around it. Now, if we were at point A, which is on the surface, what we would feel would be the gravity of the mass of the entire Earth. Because you can imagine if we kind of draw a line straight up like this, we have an equal mass on the left side of the line as the right. We also have an equal mass on the north end of the sphere and the south end of the sphere. And we're sitting here at the South Pole. So all we would need to do to calculate the gravitation that we would feel at point A would be to take the total mass of the Earth times us divided by this radius squared. And then, of course, you'd multiply it by big G. So it would be a pretty straightforward issue. But what if we were at the center of the Earth at point B? Once again, all of the shell to the north would equal all of the shell to the south. So the forces going north and south would balance each other. Likewise, the west shell and the east shell would also balance each other and the pull would be equal and opposite in all directions. So we would be weightless at the center of the earth. But what about point C? And point C could be anywhere from the center of the earth all the way out to the inside of the shell here. How would we calculate what our weight would be here? And would we have any weight? Now to solve this, we're going to use something called the method of two cones. So basically, here is the center of this circular shell, and here's the thickness of the shell, and it has mass. Our point P is somewhere offset from the center of that circle. So if we draw an angle, or two cones, intersecting at point B, we're going to get an angle here and an angle here that equal each other, and they're going to sweep out an area of the rim that is different in size and different in mass. I think that we can understand that if we divide this circle in half, and since we have an equal si mass on both sides, there's not going to be any lateral force. So what we have to do is determine if the force pulling the point P this direction equals the force pulling point P that direction. Now the gravitational attraction is derived by this formula right here. Uh, you'll recognize that although it's written in a slightly different fashion. So we have big G, the gravitational constant, times mass 1, which is the mass of point P, times mass 2, which is this bottle cap, because remember this rotates 360 degrees around on a sphere, over the distance, which in this case is S1, squared. Now because big G and mass 1 don't change it all during this problem. I'm just going to call them K. And here's the guts of what we're dealing with. But how do we calculate what mass 2, this area up here, is going to be? To do that, we need to figure out something called a solid angle. And a solid angle is basically this bottle cap of the rim. It's curved on the outside, it's curved on the inside, and it's angled a little bit on the corners. But it's a three-dimensional object. It's kind of like a disc that you push your finger into. Now before we go much further, let's go ahead and identify a couple of angles here. So if you look at this dotted line that goes straight through uh, point P and the center, this is what's called line of sight. Angle beta is the angle between line of sight and the extent of the cone. This dotted line is what's called the normal line to the line of sight. And angle alpha is this angle out here. 
So to calculate what your solid angle is, which is this delta omega, you take the mass of this area, this bottle cap here, times the cosine of alpha, divided by the distance squared, in this case, S1. And that goes from the point to the center of mass of this area. But that's not really what we want. We don't want delta omega, we want the mass. So by rearranging this a little bit, we end up with this. So the mass equals delta omega times S squared over the cosine of alpha. You see how we just rearranged that. Now here's where the magic of the Shell Theorem works out. Notice that the distance from point P to the, the center of mass of the shell cancels out. So you have S squared here and you have S squared on the denominator here. They cancel out and all you're left with is one over the cosine of alpha. This gives you the total amount of gravitational attraction. We're only interested in the gravity that pulls towards the center. So we also have to take the cosine of angle beta. So our final answer is going to be the gravity is proportional to the cosine of beta over the cosine of alpha. Here's the beauty of it. Because when you're looking at this particular point, which is offset from the center, angle beta equals angle beta. Angle alpha equals angle alpha. And although this is less mass, it's closer, so gravitational attraction proportionately is greater. This is greater mass, but it's further away, so the gravitational proportion is a little bit less. In the end, they end up balancing each other because of that relationship right there. So, what if the Earth was hollow? Well, if we were inside of it, we would all be weightless, and we just showed why. So, this is Bob the Science Guy. Thank you very much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this. A uh, little bit of math on it, but hopefully not too bad. And I'll see you again soon. We'll be completing our series on the benefits of space exploration this week. So until then, take care.